I'm Hasan Dudu uh, from Middle East Technical University of Turkey, based in Ankara. I will present you a part of my PhD dissertation that we worked with uh, Errol Chakmak, my advisor. So our topic is uh, climate change and agriculture. We use an integrated approach to see what are the effects in economy-wide, uh, to see the economy-wide effects for Turkey. So I will first talk about motivation and aim why we are doing this, then talk a bit about model approach, which is my already brief uh, uh, summarized. Oh, of course, I will first talk about climate change, then I will talk about data scenarios, etc. So the, our motivation is that we know that there is a backward and forward linkers between uh, agriculture and the rest of the economy. So what we expect is there will be an impact by climate change, which will affect agriculture, which will then feed back to economy, and economy will feed back to agriculture, etc. But the point is that we don't know how much these effects will be. So in, for Turkey, there is no, uh, there is very limited number of studies that relate climate change to agricultural production and to the rest of the economy. There are various studies about the effect of climate change on the yields, etc., etc. But on the economic side, there are really few studies. So. The ultimate, uh, ultimate uh, aim of this study is to quantify the effects of climate change on agriculture and our economy to have better policies or policy suggestions. So we aim to quantify the effects by taking into account the interregional interactions. That's another point. There, there are no regional studies for Turkey that's, that uh, differentiates the effects across regions, right? So we expect Turkey to, the different regions of Turkey to be affected differently from climate change. Then uh, we, we will use, uh, again, well-established climate scenarios, which means Hadley model, the, the results of Hadley model. And uh, we will try to enhance the CG framework that Ismail just summarized, uh, that we did in 2010. So climate effects of climate change will be significant on Turkey. That is something known from the IPCC reports and from other uh, studies. And uh, we. Uh, well, peop well the, uh, in the literature, it's expected, it means uh, the mean temperature will increase for Turkey. Then we expect precipitation to decrease. We expect growing degree days to be prolonged. Uh, we will have hotter and drier summers, milder and drier winters. Then uh, fre that, that's important, actually. Uh, the frequency of hydrological extremes, which means draws and uh, flows, will increase. And... Uh, there will be less ice and frost days, uh, and, and we, we, we need some quantification of these uh, chains on the agricultural yields in order to fit into the SCG model. So what we expect is yields to decline and irrigation requirements to increase. So uh, when we look at the, uh, agri uh, the uh, literature about agriculture, uh, effects on agriculture and economy, the decline uh, expects uh, 20% change in average yields uh, in 2000, uh, uh, 2070 to 2100. So if you, I will not tell all of them, but if you, if you, look, at, if you look at the uh, literature, you will see that the effects are expected to be significant between 15% up to 20, 30, uh, 35% in average yield. The details are in paper. So what? we do is we have a climate model. Of course, we are not running the climate model. We get the results of the climate model. The first part is done by a team in uh, Istanbul Technical University who worked with Hadley model and disaggregated it for Turkey up to 0 0.5 degrees, etc. So we have a very detailed uh, uh, climate uh, data. Then we feed this into a crop model, which I will uh, briefly describe uh, soon. Then we get the results from crop model and introduce it to the CG model. So uh, this integrated approach is very became very popular in the recent years. There are lots of studies, and probably you know most of these people. So I will not again talk at, uh, mention each of them, but the main conclusion is that the results will be significant, especially in the second half of the 21st century. I mean, up to 2040s, 2050s the effects are not very significant. Then the aggregate models cannot capture the effects. That is why we are regionalizing and that's why we are trying to disaggregate the economy as much as possible. And regional sectoral effects vary significantly 
and uh, effects are small at aggregate level. So these are the main uh, the, the, the main uh, points that the literature that I just showed you suggests. So in the crop hydrology model, we follow Ellen et al. And uh, we use a precipitation and mean temperature data for 81 NAS3 regions. So the crop, uh, the uh, crop hydrology model, the, it's a very simple model in a way. And, but it works for 81 regions uh, for 100 years. And as I told you, it's, uh, obtain, the, the results are obtained from climate change scenarios for Turkey project. Then uh, by using uh, we, we get minimum maximum temperature, speed, climatic, uh, climatic constants, crop constants, and coefficient soil constants. And all the needs, data needs, uh, most of the data needs of the uh, model follows from the FAO's crop watt uh, data base. So by using this, we first calculate the uh, reference uh, evapotranspiration for each year and each city. And this is how it looks when you average over the uh, country. So as you see, there are actually there are three trends. The first one is up to 2030s, which is uh, pretty uh, normal. Then it starts to go up, and after 2060s, uh, it re it increases uh, drastically. So this is these coefficients are used to estimate yield and irrigation water change with a simple formula. Then uh, we. Of course, then we, we estimate the change in value due to the yield shocks. That, that means since we have only one agricultural sector in CG model, uh, we, I am using the, uh, these yield chains to calculate a value added change due to the yield shocks. So I use the cultivated area to estimate the irrigation requirement. And oops, these are the equations. And this is how they look. As you see, the average of irrigation water requirement is uh, following the trend in the uh, uh, reference evapotranspiration. But yield change does not uh, oscillate as much as uh, irrigation water requirement. That is partly because of uh, irrigated agricultural activities. Because in irrigated ag agricultural activities, you don't uh, the ch yields are not changing, but water requirements are changing. As soon as you supply water. Uh, the yield doesn't change, and, but again, you have a declining trend, trend in the yields, up to 10% in average. So this is how they look, especially uh, uh, the yield change. As you see, for the first period, 2010-2035, there are regions that are uh, winning from the climate change. I mean, there are regions where the yields are improving, but for the most of the country, the yields are declining, and as you go to 2100 uh, or the 22nd century, uh, you see that the things get worse. And the same thing is correct for irrigation requirements. <coughs> so we have seven uh, activities producing seven commodities in each region. Uh, we just ignore the regional governments. All uh, business is done by the national governments. And uh, the detailed structure can be found in the paper. So, by the way, this is a Valorizing CG model based on IFPRI standard CG model. So, these are the numbers that, tell, that uh, summarizes Turkish economy in 2008. As you see, uh, we have an 11% employment rate. And when you look at the agri-food indicators, share of agriculture in GDP is 9%. So, it's not very big, actually. Uh, and we have... 23% of uh, people employed in agriculture. So the main link of agriculture to the rest of the economy is through employment. And the agro-food imports uh, is around 9 billion and exports are around 10 billion. So we have a net uh, trading surplus in agriculture in the base year. So this is the production structure. The only thing that is different from what Ismail told is this irrigated land water uh, nest at the production function. In order to capture this uh, irrigation or uh, irrigated land demand better, we put a, actually I should have some names, yeah. We, we put a Leontief nest, uh, an extra nest to the production structure so that uh, first uh, irrigated land and water uh, combines to as a, a irrigated land water composite and then goes into the CS production function. So the consumption and labor supply, the, the, the second different thing from the standard uh, IFPIR model is uh, this uh, labor supply part because 
we endogenize the labor supply, the uh, leisure enters into the uh, utility function, and when you solve it, it's a very standard uh, problem. Uh, you have a, a labor supply equation, which is introduced into the model. So uh, labor supply adjusts endogenously, but of course we need a rule of motion for labor force participation, uh, which is a very simple uh, rule, in fact. So the government, as Ismail told, isn't, uh, doesn't have any uh, objective function. It's just collecting taxes and making some spendings with uh, constant shares. Uh, the rest of the world, uh, well, imports and exports are uh, specified with uh, uses Armington specification. Uh, but, well, rest of the world doesn't have any objective function too. Okay, they just buy and sell goods to and from the country. So. I want to pass these parts very fast because uh, they're really boring. Yeah, well, we did a lot of things uh, about the SAM. We started with a very talented uh, student SAM uh, for 2008. We just regionalized it. And uh, the, the only thing that I want to mention is that we introduce intermediate input demand and final commodity demand into the model. That means the regions are trading with each other. Why we do that? Because uh, just think about Istanbul. It's a big industrial city with very little uh, agricultural production. So agri they, Istanbul produces very little agricultural products, produces a significant amount of manufacturing products, which is an important input in uh, agricultural production. So if no interregional flow of inputs, then there will be excess input in Istanbul, right? We will be calibrating wrong. So Istanbul. Uh, trades his inputs or sends his in, uh, excess, these excess inputs to the other regions according to the production shares. So we have a commodity trade too, and I will again describe this with an Istanbul example. Istanbul produces very little agricultural products, but consumes significant amount of agricultural products because it's a very crowded city. So Istanbul need to buy some agricultural uh, commodities from other regions. So that's how we establish the links between the regions, right? The regions are trading inputs and uh, commodities. So the closure rules are pretty standard. I'm not mentioning them. So these are the macro indicators. Now, these, okay, I run, I run the scenario for each year. That means I have 100 uh, scenario results. But instead of showing all of them, I'm just giving you minimum, maximum, and average of <coughs> Uh, these scenario results between 2010 and 2035. As you see, what is uh, important here is that, okay, the minimums are, starts with uh, minus six, look at the GDP, uh, minus six percent, but the averages are really small. I mean, on the average, you don't expect to see much change in the economy. But from year to year, there will be significant oscillations in the GDP and in, the all, in, in all accounts, exports, household consumption, etc. When you go to the 2035-2060 period, then the minimums gets worse, like 8%, minus 8%. But see that average, but see that the maximums are still at the same range, about plus 6%. So in the second period, you will experience more bad years, but the number of good years will, or uh, the, the good years will not change much. But in the last period, after 2060, you see that the max values will decline significantly. I mean, the maximum that we get is 1.70 compared to 6%. So that is the picture. I mean, first, actually, I should have picture. No, I don't have the picture. OK, in the first period, there are years, there are bad years, there are good years. On the average, nothing changed. In the second period, the number of uh, bad years starts to increase, or the severity of the bad years starts to increase. But in the last period, the, uh, the good years starts to decline and the effects start to, uh, to be minimal. This is the uh, results for the agricultural sector. As you see, the production declines, uh, irrigated land use falls. Why? Because now this is a complicated story. Because of this new nest, what happens is that, uh, you see, I do not play much with the water supply, right? So the water supply is, is a fixed, uh, uh, fixed factor in supply. So what happens is price of water increases significantly, right? 8% and 25%. Because of this extra nest, this time the demand for irrigated land declines significantly, right? That's how, that's how this uh, climate shock is translated uh, in the factors market. 
And as you see, what Turkey tries to do is, uh, well, under these circumstances, Turkey tries to compensate uh, the decline in the production with imports, right? We try to uh, increase the imports. Actually, we increase the imports and uh, decrease the exports, increase the trade deficit in order to compensate for the decline in the production. In the food production, actually, the decline is because of the costs caused by the agricultural products, because agricultural products is a very significant uh, item in the input output table for food production. Uh, the factor prices decline, but intermediate input prices increase, especially agriculture. And there is a significant factor layoff in food production. You see, uh, it should be in employment role, right? And, and for the other sectors, uh, there are similar effects. Oral employment of water doesn't change because it's fixed. And the trade balance uh, improves in the overall because when you increase the food imports and decrease the food exports, you need to pay for that from somewhere. And what you do is you simply increase, uh, you simply uh, give up some part of trade in other sectors. So these are the regional maps. They, as you see, uh, the eastern regions does not lose as much as the western regions. And there is a belt here, which is actually the food production belt in Turkey. And they are the most losing uh, regions. And, uh, or, but at the end of the day, in the last period, as you see, these regions, uh, the Black Sea and the eastern regions does not lose as much as the other regions. So my main conclusions are that uh, the effects of climate change can be, we don't know for sure, as uh, Charles said, there is a high margin of uh, 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 high margin of risk in climate change, but these effects can be quite significant. But Turkey still have time to take some adaptation measures, at least up to 2030s, if the Hadley model uh, is correct. And the food security becomes a significant concern because uh, food production is affected as much as agriculture. And <coughs> employment is also seriously affected. Uh, the factors are, or the factors are mobilized towards agri agriculture. And even if the effects are, see that we don't have any uh, sticky labor structure. So labor can go to agriculture anyway. But I'm not sure if this is the case in the real life. Once people, uh, came from villages or rural areas to the urban areas, they may not go back as easy. So uh, we don't have that in the model. But the model uh, expects them to go back. And if this doesn't happen, that means more decline in the agricultural production. So even if the effects are lighter in the uh, eastern regions, they are affected as seriously as the western regions because of these regional links. And the policy implications that we can suggest for Turkish policymakers is we should in any case, improve the productivity in agriculture and decrease the dependence of agricultural production on rainfed activities increase, uh, and improve the efficiency of irrigation infrastructure. And for a future research prospect, uh, we are working on a dynamic model because it will offer more insights to the, what, what's going on in the economy. And uh, we, we are trying to introduce some stochastic shocks to capture the increase in variation in climate conditions. Because in that, in that time, I will be able to give some uh, statistical, uh, some statistics like uh, standard deviation and some maybe tests, etc. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so that's what we are trying to do anyway. Okay, thank you very much for listening.